so in this session we are basically going to look at financial ratios and analysis of those ratios and we are going to use a specific example of the airline industry with respect to our uh, our uh, decision making uh, it's an interesting industry uh, for a variety of reasons and we'll come to that as we go along but we are first going to talk about some of the key ratios that are there in finance how do you calculate them and what are the interpretations of those uh, ratios that we are looking at and we're going to talk about the airline industry a little bit and then as we calculate the ratio for these two firms indigo and spicejet we'll get a sense of uh, you know whatever we read about the airline industry does that make sense or not in the context of their numbers right uh, all the data that has been used has been picked up from publicly available sources uh, which is the annual reports of the two companies and uh, uh, the dgca uh, which is the Director General of uh, Civil Aviation website, which gives statistics about uh, airlines flying. And we'll kind of go around and looking at that. So let's first quickly have a recap of, you know, what are ratios and why do we need them? And what kind of ratios are we going to look at? So let's first understand about ratios. Now, any ratio which has basically a broad construct of a numerator and a denominator, the idea is to, th you know, show some sort of a relation, some sort of a, uh, you know, one thing driving the other right i can obviously calculate uh, ratios using any two numbers in finance but the premise of calculating a ratio is generally between two items that are relating so one is causing the other or one is influencing the other and that's how we try and calculate ratios the objective of ratios is basically to help us compare right across firms uh, help us look at history of a firm and then compare it along the history as well and figure out you know whether a firm is doing better or worse as compared to its peers or as compared to its own history right so that gives a sense of how do you go about uh, analyzing uh, companies also it makes comparison possible by standardizing data right i mean just take an example of these two firms if i look at indigo and spicejet clearly indigo is bigger than the spicejet is big, bigger than spicejet right so when i'm comparing the two on pure numbers like let's say profits or revenues indigo will be bigger than uh, spicejet clearly right so we are trying to basically ascertain whether uh, or not uh, we can compare them on certain metrics by standardizing the data across the two firms right so that's how ratios basically help us uh, in terms of evaluating firms, uh, there are a variety of ratios that talk about typically, you know, the financial health of a company. So we are looking at financial health of companies and there are various parameters through which you can judge. We are not going to have an exhaustive list of ratios in this session. We are going to use a specific set of ratios and try and understand and calculate them as we go along. So let's start with what we are going to look at. I'll briefly explain what these are. So we have some ratios called the profitability ratios, which is basically, you know, how much profit you are making on a certain amount of sales as an entity that you're doing. So if a company is making sales of 100 rupees and it is, uh, you know, this is sales, there are operating costs that it has. What are operating costs? Operating costs could be, let's say, let's say 70 is the total operating cost. Uh, operating costs are all the costs that come in the context of a company operating its business running its business right so what you get is operating profit here and that operating profit is 30 typically this operating profit is also known as EBITDA earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization then you pay out some of the other uh, you know expenses pay out taxes and you come to the final net profit number let's say that is 10 right so this company for 100 rupees of sales is generating 30 rupees of profit and 10 rupees of uh, 30 rupees of operating profit and 10 rupees of final profit after taxes right so what we are basically trying to uh, trying to ascertain and look at is uh, uh, is uh, you know what is the kind of profit for per 100 rupee of sale you are th that you are generating right in this case 30% will be the operating profit margin 30 divided by 100 and 10% will be the net profit margin, 10 divided by 100, right? Now I can compare it with another firm. Let's say another firm does 20% of operating profit, then they are generating less operating profit per rupee of sales, right? So clearly the first firm is more profitable than the second firm, if I look at these two firms and compare. So that's what profitability ratios tell me. 
which basically tells us how profitable the firm is how profitable the firm is then you have something called as return ratios right now return ratios are nothing but you know every year people give money to the firm right so how much is the company generating as a return on that capital right again a comparative metric the idea basically being that you know if i am a shareholder or i am a person or a bank who has given money to the to the company what has the company really done with those funds right so if i am a shareholder share capital and reserves is my claim in the firm right that's what i what i own in this particular firm every year i have the choice as a shareholder to basically take this money out if i want i can close the business sell all the assets pay all the liabilities and what is left is share capital plus reserves i can take this out what profit i generate on this is basically what the return the firm is generating so if a firm is generating a return on net worth this is also called as return on equity commonly used term is return on equity if a firm is generating a return on equity of 5% the shareholder will think twice before you know giving more money to this firm they'll probably say okay why don't i basically just pick out uh, pick out uh, you know the the whole uh, idea of uh, taking this money out and then putting this in a bank account where i can do a fixed deposit that will give me 6% right so the comparison will be with respect to you know what is the opportunity cost so you will find again that there are multiple measures like return on net worth return on capital employed return on long term assets uh, that the firm has there could be others as well return on total assets uh, return on uh, invested capital there are various forms of the return measures but the most commonly used ones are return on net worth or return on equity also known as roe and roce these are the two most commonly used ones which basically tell you how much money is being returned again when we calculate i'll explain them again with more details then we go to something called as coverage ratios now as the name suggests this basically tells you how much you are covering your interest by right so basically if you look at this uh, forget the last two they are more complicated as they come along and you start trying to kind of understand what you're doing with the with the firm's debt but ebit which is earnings before interest and tax from this you subtract the interest to get earnings before tax or profit before tax right this ratio is nothing but a ratio of how much your ebit covers your interest cost right how much your ebit covers your interest cost higher the better if you have more profit before interest and tax that is covering your interest cost you are in a safer situation because remember interest is a fixed cost you have to pay it regardless of what is happening consider a firm whose sales is 100 and you know all kind of costs you remove all of them and you go to ebit which is let's say 10 and your interest is let's say 7 right now if you calculate interest coverage that will be 10 by 7 which will be approximately 1.4 but if this company sales drop by 5 rupees right 5% let's say to 95 and let's say all costs don't change at all your ebit will go down to 5 interest is a fixed cost you will not be able to cover your interest you will not be able to pay your interest so ideally you want a higher interest coverage ratio so we are going to look at this debt service coverage ratio is nothing but it also incorporates uh, not just interest but the principal repayment every year that you are doing as well in the denominator right so that's basically uh, a, a sort of a offshoot of your interest coverage ratio but for all practical purposes interest coverage ratio is what we are looking at then we look at stability ratio which is commonly also uh, referred to as debt to equity some of these terms we are just kind of uh, putting them to uh, help all of us be clear about what those terms are so uh, you know textbooks might refer to them as other ratios but debt or equity a company has a choice to raise capital through either of these mechanisms you want to see a healthy proportion of both of these right now some textbooks say this is long term debt by equity some textbooks also say it is total debt by equity right so you would find both these definitions you know personally i prefer using total debt by equity that's a that's a sort of a 
you know broader all encompassing ratio that is there but you'll find both these definitions which are available right we'll look at this and understand where where do firms stand with respect to this we will look at liquidity ratios right now what is liquidity ratio is how liquid is your firm basically saying that if today someone comes and you know asks for their money from your firm would you be able to repay it right so not a very very critical ratio in the context of a steady firm and as you learn a little bit more about finance you'll realize the nuances that go along with this specific ratio but uh, you're basically trying to say okay are my current assets enough to cover my current liabilities current assets are assets which are going to generate money for me in the near term current liabilities are liabilities where i have to pay money in the near term do i have enough assets in order to cover the liabilities that can come up in the near term that's the concept of this ratio right now current assets typically include cash receivables inventory so if you remove inventory also from the numerator right which is ca minus inventory you typically get this number cash plus receivables quick ratio is a more stringent form of current ratio right why are we doing this is let's say tomorrow someone who you owe money to like let's say a bank where you have taken short term loan comes to your doorstep and says give me my money i may not be able to offload my inventory quickly it might take some time for me to offload the inventory right cash and receivables is the stuff that i can i can immediately kind of convert to cash and uh, repay the liabilities so that's a stringent form of uh, of uh, the current ratio that we are using here and then we move to something called as turnover ratio these are again interesting because they kind of denote what is the efficiency of the firm now once again if you go to textbooks the definitions could differ a little bit uh, i'll come to that separately but for our practical understanding we are going to any turnover ratio if you have abc turnover you know turnover ratio turnover is nothing but another term for sales so you are basically taking sales and dividing it by whatever abc is so if i have inventory turnover ratio i have sales by inventory if i have receivables turnover ratio it's sales by receivables if i have asset turnover it's sales by total assets if i have fixed asset turnover ratio it's sales by fixed assets so that's a standard formula that i'm going to use here in textbooks you will find different measures of this formula so for example this is given as cost of goods sold by inventory uh, while textbooks are fine broadly in the industry if you go and look at how do people analyze analysts use the ratios they will always use sales why do they use sales is beyond the scope of discussion here for now we'll just keep it simple let's just divide sales what is it trying to say if you denote in in the denominator most of the times there is an asset right so if i say take for example sales by total assets if my sales is 1000 and my total assets is let's say 2000 i am using 2000 crore of assets to generate 1000 crore of sales my ratio is 0 0.5 every rupee of asset i generate half a rupee of sales there's another firm whose assets are 2000 but sales are 3000 now this firm generates 1.5 rupees of sales per rupee of asset who's more efficient the one with the higher turnover ratio so again turnover ratios higher the better they denote efficiency of a firm if a firm is more efficient you'll find big turnover ratios they also tell you which sectors are more efficient and which sectors are less efficient right a couple of things that are important about ratios right uh, in general most of our education system and uh, curriculums teach us more about ratio calculation right now calculation is important but that's the easy part because it's like a standard formula you can put the formula you'll calculate it nobody is really going to kind of uh, you know ask someone uh, and you know recruit someone as an analyst to to be able to calculate ratios ratio calculation is the small deal but how does that calculation lead into any kind of interpretation that's the key stage that we need to have right we need to be able to interpret the movement of those ratios why is the number going up or going down it's a skill you develop over a period of time but i'm trying to say that you know just don't stop at calculation calculation is just one part take it one step ahead try and understand what's happening behind those numbers the second thing is don't worry too much about the formula right so don't uh, 
worry about you know remembering these formulae you know uh, whether you remember it or not is immaterial anyway you can google it at any point of time if you forget the formula for return on equity or return on uh, capital employed you can just google it you'll get the data and you can just go ahead and uh, calculate it based on that right what is important again is your ability to comprehend what that number means more than anything else so that's something that is uh, going to be critical if you want to build a career in finance or want to kind of understand companies and their financials better it's important to be able to interpret those numbers in a slightly better manner right i will uh, take you a little bit to the airline industry now we will talk very quickly about the airline industry nuances and then uh, go ahead and uh, start calculating some of these ratios and understanding some of these ratios for the firms that are under question right so airline is an interesting industry it's uh, globally been an industry that has uh, kind of been in trouble since times uh, immemorial and you know, beginning of the segment itself it has always been in trouble various reasons contribute to that trouble problem one is that it's a very high fixed cost and sort of capital intensive industry right you can't randomly just go and be able to start an airline unless you have a lot you know a lot of money to be able to throw around the problem it's very difficult for an airline to survive right there are too many externalities we are in fact right in the middle of an externality the airlines are down for no fault of theirs they just can't fly and you know the unfortunate reality is that a lot of them are in trouble at this point of time purely because of uh, conditions that are not in their control right if you think of externalities you could look at uh, delays as externality right you could look at uh, oil prices which is one of their biggest costs as externalities you know it could go up it could go down you really don't know what's happening there security is an externality right right now health security is an externality so a lot of externalities and th things that are beyond their control you know weather is an externality for the uh, for the airlines industry right uh, in india for example in delhi in the months of uh, december and january flights are invariably delayed or cancelled because of fog so that's a big challenge right and it's a very high competition industry globally there is very little brand loyalty concept of branding doesn't exist in uh, in airlines to a large extent if i have to fly from point a to point b i'll typically look for the flight with the cheapest uh, fare right and you know the best uh, timing availability at any point of time uh, so you know most connectivity etc is uh, is uh, is what uh, uh, probably helps you so the again an industry where the bigger has an advantage against the smaller ones purely because of the high fixed cost and you know these kind of conditions where uh, if if things go bad then you know a bigger player is probably able to survive a little bit longer than the smaller player so that's something that is very very critical to this particular industry when we look at it when we look at the numbers we'll realize that some of the numbers will not look good for these airlines specifically getting into the uh, fag end of 2019 uh, as of now we don't have the results available for 2020 financial year so we're going to use only data till 2019 and try and kind of comprehend what uh, what some of these ratios would mean right so let's uh, not spend uh, too much time here and let's go to an excel file uh, which will be shared with you guys post this session so we have an excel file here which has data for indigo and spicejet last four years right all the data is available in the form of uh, crores uh, and rupees crore inr crore and uh, we are basically going to uh, use these data points to calculate the ratios of these uh, these firms on the same sheet here right so that we can then go and compare uh, these numbers across firms some of these numbers may not be directly available so we might just want to calculate them on a particular sheet and try and arrive at those numbers as well so let's go to indigo's pnl indigo gives you ebitda it gives you profit for the year it does not directly give you ebit right so if i want to calculate a bit somewhere i can calculate it or i can just you know i can just write a bit somewhere here right below the profit i'll just probably calculate a bit which is my ebitda minus my depreciation correct so that's earnings before interest and tax i've removed the depreciation data so i get to this same for spicejet i'll look at what data is available so they give you a beta 
they again don't give you a bit so i'm going to come here right at the bottom and once again calculate a bit and that's going to be my EBITDA minus my depreciation number and so those are the data points that i have you see the company is going into losses there are some data points around you know uh, sort of uh, passengers and departures we'll see where we can use that right let's go and calculate the ratios and for our ease of understanding what i can do is i can also write down the formula here itself so it helps us uh, kind of recall what's happening there so ebitda margin is nothing but ebitda divided by sales net profit margin is net profit divided by sales ebitda divided by sales and there's a function called EBITDA margin specific to this industry. Airlines use a lot of aircrafts on rentals. Sometimes they remove these lease rentals and then calculate what is called as EBITDA margin. We'll try and calculate that as well, right? So some of them are straightforward. I can just go to the Indigo PNL and look at the EBITDA for that year and divide it by the sales for that year. I'll use revenue from operations. I'm going to use revenue from operations right uh, similarly i'm going to go to indigo's pnl i'm going to calculate profit for that year and i'm going to divide that by revenue from operations i'm going to go to ebit margin indigo's pnl we've calculated ebit in the last row divide that by revenue from operations first row and there's something called as ebit tar margin now here what i'll do is i'll take ebit tar which is here right and you see some of these aircraft and engine rentals here right row number 11 i'll add this back so i'll add this number and then divide this by the total sales this is specific to this industry some other industries uh, you know use other uh, metrics uh, for example pharma industry would probably look at ebitda margin and then also remove research expenditure so EBITDA, you know, before research is sometimes that pharma industry uses. I can drag and drop this on the right side. That's the data that is available for Indigo. So we have calculated the profitability ratios, right? For return ratios, I'm going to use net profit and divided by total equity of the firm. Here on capital employed in the numerator, we change it to EBIT and in the denominator, we change it to equity plus debt. Return on assets is nothing but EBIT divided by total assets, right? So let's calculate. I go to Indigo PNL, profit for the year divided by Indigo balance sheet. On the balance sheet, you will find the equity value, which is the total equity value here. Enter, right? Now you'll get some crazy numbers here, but that's okay. Don't worry. We'll see uh, why they are coming there. Uh, this is probably because your equity is very small at the beginning and indigo just listed at that point of time right return on capital employed indigo pnl i will go to the to the ebit number divided by in brackets i will add the total equity and i will add financial liabilities in terms of borrowings right so that's something that I've taken. If you want, you can also take sort of uh, short term liabilities or, you know, these other financial liabilities as well. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to take uh, other financial liabilities as well. Or you could just leave it at long term borrowings to begin with. As a simplistic case, you could just add uh, B35, which is equity and take borrowings, which is long term borrowings, right? To keep it simple you can always kind of look at nuances and variances around this and uh, add a different number as i said don't be a stickler for the formula as long as you are using one particular formula somewhere keep it consistent across the across the forms right ebit divided by total assets so that's my ebit and i can divide it by my total assets which is here row 29 total assets so those are my three return ratios we have calculated the return ratios as well, right? Let's now, interestingly, rather than going to uh, to uh, Indigo further, let's turn our attention to SpiceJet for the same set of numbers, right? So let's go to 2016 data for SpiceJet PNL, and let's look at where is the EBITDA that's here, and divided by the 
revenue from operations. So we get this. What is the net profit for SpiceJet in that year? So let's go right down to the final cell divided by the revenue from operations. What is EBIT margin? We've calculated EBIT. Interestingly, EBIT is not too different from the PAT number. So the number is going to be similar. And if I was to calculate the lease rentals thing as well for this, they give lease charges into two parts. So I will take the EBITDA number, which is here. And to this, I will add lease charges for the aircrafts. And there are certain you know other lease charges for auxiliary power units and uh, engines etc supplementary lease charges so i've added all of that and divide that by revenue from operations right so we get these numbers let's make them as percentages and let's drag them on the right side now you'll realize that very clearly if i get into a comparison of these two firms indigo is the more profitable of the two of the two firms that we see, Indigo is the more profitable firm. Every year, their EBITDA margin and net profit margin is higher than uh, SpiceJet. SpiceJet runs into losses in 2019. You know. Similarly, I can calculate return on equity numbers. Uh, this would be interesting for SpiceJet because SpiceJet uh, has been in existence for a longer period and it was in losses, so its equity is actually uh, negative. It kept making losses, the equity turned negative. So if you look at the total equity number, you'll get a meaningless number here. If you look at return on capital employed, you will look at EBIT and divide EBIT by equity plus any kind of borrowings that you have, right? I'll keep it similar for uh, these guys as well. And that's again negative. And negative numbers are basically meaningless in this context. And return on asset is going to be EBIT divided by my total assets. So we get this right again. Let's convert it to percentages. Take it on the right side. Uh, both the firms, some of these numbers are sort of distorted numbers. If you look at a firm like Indigo, you see a very high return on equity number, not because the company is generating 100% on equity, but because the company just listed at that point. So when they listed, their first year profit was very large, but their equity amount was very small. You see 86% here. That's because the total equity has just started turning. You know, in fact, this 86 is incorrect. Um, the equity is negative and the profit is also negative. They made a loss this year, right? You see this net profit margin at minus 3%. So this is a meaningless number in, in that context for the airline industry at this point. You probably will make more sense of how return on equity has dramatically fallen for Indigo. And if they are in this kind of a stress, everyone else will also be in substantial stress in this industry, right? So that's something that we have. Let's look at debt equity ratios. Uh, so I can just go to Indigo's balance sheet, look at long-term borrowings and divided by the equity number for uh, total equity. For Indigo, this number is not gonna to be too useful. Uh, for SpiceJet, this number is not gonna to be too useful. Interest coverage. What was interest coverage? EBIT, EBIT divided by my finance cost, right? So that looks comfortable for Indigo. Uh, debt is not too much, so they are okay, right? Let's calculate the same for these guys. Again, debt to equity will not be too meaningful for uh, SpiceJet because equity is negative. And so that tells us a genuine problem with respect to, uh, you know, how do you deal with these kind of firms in terms of ratio analysis? That's a negative number. Let's look at interest coverage that might have more meaning. So EBIT divided by finance cost, which is here, right? So let's just convert it to decimal points and move it here. So last year interest coverage is not, uh, not good it's not in a good shape because obviously the company is making losses on almost all levels so they don't have money to pay the interest at this point of time correct let's focus on efficiency so all these are turnover ratios and all of them as we said we're going to basically use the formula so this was long-term debt to equity this is a bit divided by finance cost or interest whatever you want to call it all of these are sales divided by 
fixed assets, sales divided by inventory. Actually, let me convert it to sales divided by inventory, sales by receivables sales divided by payables textbooks give some different definitions but that's okay uh, sales divided by total assets right simple calculations we'll go to pnl indigo's pnl revenue from operations why is revenue from operations important is because other income could be income that is coming out of uh, you know general deposits lying somewhere that's not your business you're not generating that on uh, on your fixed assets basically right so I take this, I divide it by on the Indigo balance sheet. If I go and look at what are the total fixed assets, uh, that's uh, that's these things put together, right? The sum of these four. So I'm going to have to change the formula a little bit. Let's go Indigo sales divided by sum of on the balance sheet, the long-term assets. That gives me one. Inventory turnover is going to be sales divided by my inventory for that year. So I'll go and look at assets and that's my inventory. Right. Then I look at receivable turnover. That's Indigo PNL sales divided by my balance sheet trade receivables. Not too much because this is a B2C industry. Right. Payable turnover is going to be Indigo sales divided by any kind of accounts payable that's on the liability side right so these are trade payables that we have and asset turnover is my sales divided by total assets right so I'm gonna go to total assets and just simply divide it correct now we'll do the same for the rest of the years and then we are going to do the same for uh, for uh, SpiceJet, right? So let's uh, go to SpiceJet PNL very quickly. Sales is here, 5088 divided by sum of all my fixed assets, which are available right at the top. So these two, right? In this case, these two. Then sales divided by SpiceJet PNL divided by sorry I have to link the sales here so let's go and link the sales revenue from operations divided by inventories that's here you take sales which is here and divided by the receivables that's actually here you have some other receivables also but those are not trade receivables they just classify some other stuff as receivable so I'm not going to use that in the formula sales divided by payables that should be on the other side liabilities so these are trade payables and I have finally total sales divided by total assets right now let's put those in and compare Right now, look at look at uh, sales by total assets. It seems like uh, SpiceJet is uh, is doing better, even on a fixed asset basis. At least in the recent year, SpiceJet has turned uh, more efficient. They are generating more sales using the same amount of assets. But on some of the other parameters, uh, Indigo seems to be superior. In fact, historically, Indigo was superior. I probably assume that in this particular year, they tried to expand a lot. So typically what happens is when you expand a lot, your assets increase dramatically that year, but your sales may increase after two or three years. So if you suddenly expand in a year, you would you would probably interpret, you know, the asset ratios, the turnover ratios going down a little bit because that year the benefit of all those assets may not have played out. If I put a big factory this year, my total assets and fixed assets are going to go up, which will take these numbers lower, but uh, the benefit of that will probably appear in the next couple of years. So that's how you could compare some of these uh, these firms. Now, interestingly, there is a metric called days calculation. 
right so when you calculated sales by inventory if i take the reciprocal of that that is inventory divided by sales that basically tells me how much is my inventory as a percentage of the sales correct if i now multiply that number with 365 right so if i take uh, let's go to the ppt and let me explain the concept here right if i take inventory by sales inventory as a percentage of sales and multiply this with 365 this will basically give me an estimate of you know how many days of sales equals the inventory number correct i'll give you an example if inventory is let's say 100 sales is 1000 into 365 then 36.5 days of sales you know days of sales is equal to the amount stuck as inventory right if my sales is 1000 then in one tenth of the year which is 36.5 i will make 100 crore of sales and that will be equal to my inventory right so i can convert these numbers in terms of days worth of sales or days of sales that's what is here now how do you do that 365 multiplied by inventory by sales but we already have the reciprocal of that here sales by inventory so i can actually just take 365 and divide by inventory turnover ratio will give me the same number so 365 divided by this i can do the same here 365 divided by receivable turnover ratio and i can divide 365 by payable turnover ratio right i can calculate this for both the companies standard formula i'll remove this correct now what does this mean this basically means that at any given point of time my inventory is worth two to three days of sales it tells me at any given point of time my inventory for spicejet is worth five days of sales so they have kept more inventory than than uh, than indigo spicejet is running more inventory as compared to indigo is that good is that not good that's something for us to interpret further obviously more research is needed if you want to interpret that but it seems like spicejet keeps more inventory when you compare it to their sales as compared to uh, you know indigo so if if uh, you want to release that money that is stuck in inventory indigo just needs 2.7 days of sales spicejet needs 5.6 days of sales right these numbers are typically inventory turnover ratios are you know higher the better so consequently because this is in the denominator in these uh, days ratios this is uh, lower the better in that context right there's another concept called cash conversion cycle again a broader understanding of cash conversion cycle is uh, is uh, diagrammatically if i explain this to you right so let's uh, let's try and understand cash conversion cycle very simply put let's say i procure raw materials at this point then i convert them to finished goods and i do the sales here and then i collect the money here correct so you know this is my effectively my inventory days in very simplistic terms this is inventory days and this is my receivable days how many days does it basically take me to collect my money if this is 20 days and this is 30 days then right from procuring the raw material to collecting the money there is a 50 day cycle for my business right now when i procure the raw material i might make the payment after 15 days right make payment for 15 days after 15 days correct so if you think about it i'm basically going to fund my business for this duration 50 minus 15 this is where money goes out this is where money comes in this 35 days is where i'm funding my business right now you could have another interesting scenario where you procure raw material convert it to sales so this is raw material whatever the raw material is this is sales you collect money because your business does not require you to do a later this thing but you pay for raw material here in this case you actually have a 
negative cycle this is going to be a negative cycle so here 50 minus 15 was the number let's say here we have 10 here and 10 here and 30 here we'll have the number as minus 10 so practically you are running your business on someone else's money for 10 days right if you look at this that's what the cash conversion cycle is so it's inventory days plus receivable days minus payable days that's negative for both these firms as you see here and that tells you that the firms are making the payment later but they are receiving their money up front and that's logical because there isn't too much inventory for these guys to keep if you think about the airline business and you would get paid up front pay for the ticket and then travel right so there isn't going to be a concept of receivable either so that's the construct of these ratios that you're looking at now let's turn our attention to a few more things so far what we have done is we have looked at ratios from the perspective of financials now i'm going to introduce a couple of interesting business ratios right what is this business about so this business is about carrying passengers Right. And again, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to use the total revenue, the revenue they give a breakup if you want of passenger revenue as well. And this business is a business about departures. How many flights are flying at any given point of time? So I can actually segregate everything on the basis of these two numbers, right? We have these two numbers available. So if I go to the SpiceJet PNL and I basically go right at the bottom of the screen, right? Let's uh, Let's go to the ratio sheet and let's say revenue per passenger, right? And then I can also look at, you know, things like costs per departure, right? So let's look at revenue per passenger in INR and I have this number only for the 2019 year. So I'm going to take my Indigo's p &L look at the total revenue from operations and they do give a breakup of passenger and cargo revenue bulk of it is passenger so i'm keeping it simple for the time being this is in crores so i'll multiply by 10 raised to 7 in order to convert it to rupees and then i divide it by the total number of passengers they flew that year right which is about 6 crore so 4746 rupees on average is the ticket price for them that they charge the same number for SpiceJet, if I go to the PNL, I look at their revenue for 2019, multiply this with 10 raised to 7 to convert it to rupees, and then divide it by the total number of passengers they flew. Interestingly, SpiceJet charges more. So SpiceJet has a bigger revenue per passenger than what Indigo has, right? Look at another interesting metric like cost per departure. Right, so let's go to the PNL and look at the total expenses that the firm has. That's here, right? Let's convert this to lakhs, right? Or let's just convert it to rupees itself, 10 raised to seven to keep things simple and divide this by the total number of departures that are happening that year. What do you see? About 6,39,000, right? Let's do that for SpiceJet as well. So you look at, total expenses which is 9117 into 10 raised to 7 divided by total number of departures about 5 lakh 83000 right now think about it how many passengers needed for break even i mean if i assume that this cost is being divided on a per departure basis then for breaking even indigo needs 134 passengers spicejet spicejet needs lesser because they are charging more and their costs are probably slightly lower maybe they are flying a different kind of aircraft right maybe they are flying lesser number of aircrafts on specific routes but i can get that data and understand on a business metric basis as to you know how much uh, what is the number of passengers approximately needed for a uh, for a you know break-even point for both of these firms, right? If you go on their PLs actually and look at the biggest cost metrics, right? You will also see that the dependence on fuel is huge. So there is another way to kind of calculate ratios is you take each ratio and divide it by each number line item and divide it by the sales number. And let's just freeze the sales number for a minute to find out which is the biggest cost for this business. 
right? And look at the biggest cost for the business. That's 40% of your total sales goes in fuel expenses only, right? So if oil prices go up, they double, companies are in big, big stress, right? Because that's a fixed cost that's gonna go up. Engine rentals are fixed. Aircraft and engine rentals are fixed in that context, right? So right now we are in an unprecedented time where this cost is actually not a fixed cost because the aircraft is not even flying. So it's not using fuel cost as well. But in steady state, if you look at this ratio and the aircraft is flying only 100 people, they're actually running the aircraft at a loss on that circuit, right? So that's that's why it's a cutthroat business where you know you need a lot of planning to understand that every flight you're running on a particular segment or a circuit is uh, is running its proper loads at any given point of time that uh, in the context of this uh, industry is something known as passenger load factor and you could explore that a little bit more all this data is actually easily available in the annual reports of these firms and uh, the data that is uh, that is relevant for the airline industry is also available on the dgca website so you could play around with a lot of these numbers and uh, and understand the industry a little bit better right that is broadly it in our uh, in our discussion today we have some more resources in case you are generally interested on the airlines industry so on our youtube channel there is a video on uh, industry analysis of the airline industry right uh, so you can search for uh, you know airline industry analysis pin shiksha and you will basically get uh, a youtube video which will have uh, about a 30 35 minute of a video understanding of how airlines work you will also see uh, if you go on our website right there are three blog posts on the airline industry so a lot of this data is uh, is decoded there in terms of how does this industry work how does it uh, kind of generate money what is happening in the industry at this point of time what are the nuances of the industry you could explore that a little bit with respect to ratios as i said it is important that you don't worry too much about the nitty gritties of remembering the remembering the formula what is important is that you understand how are you comparing these companies how are you basically interpreting those numbers right calculation is one part of the story but calculation is the easier part interpretation is the more important part so focus more on trying to dig deeper into those numbers and say okay why are these numbers going up or why are these numbers going down right obviously it's a long journey today's session was just meant to kind of give a quick introduction uh, to you know how do you go about doing this ratio analysis compare two firms based on the data that is available and initiate a little bit of uh, you know understanding into this segment as you keep trying this more you'll keep uh, evolving a little bit more and learning a little bit more about different companies different sectors different data points as you look at these data uh, metrics that are available right so that is broadly it from me in the session today